I don't want to hear anything else. He said two things to me. He said, I'm the roast master, and he said, give me a list of all the DJs that are going to be in the <laughs> 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 so, And then he told me about two or three days ago that he's coming down to hurt feelings. So Yo. if you've seen Russell live, if you know what Russell does, he's amazing at what he does. Crowd control is, is his biggest asset. He's quicker than anybody on the planet, when and he's coming down to hurt some feelings. So if you... Yes. If you want to see this, and I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it, when we talk about dark us, dark clothes, and fair shades, in the back. In the back. To the block the, 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 the tears. To block the tears. Yeah, it, it's, it's going to be it's gonna be a problem. And we yeah. have a crazy, uh, crazy deus. Um, Arthur Simeon, if you've ever seen him, hilarious. Mm. Big Norm, Cypher Sounds, Cardinal Official. Yes, he'll be roasting. <laughs> Jay Martin, John Paul, Julie Black, Ruben Paul, who opens for Russell. He's from L.A. He's really dope. Okay. And, of course, my wife, Shannon, is going to be roasting. Oh, my gosh. Yes. She's I, been I roasting think... me for years, but now she'll do it in public. In public. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, think I want to see that over wow. Russell. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, that, that's the, I, 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 that part is tough because I'm quick with the comebacks, but I got to balance that comeback. <laughs> I gotta, go, I gotta go home. Yeah, yeah. I gotta balance that. And then I got my man P Plus holding down the music for the night. And wow. that's that's just the roast part. The yeah. after party, I'm not gonna lie to you. This is what I'm most excited about because mm -hmm. I'm a DJ nerd. I'm a DJ junkie. I'm a music junkie. And this lineup right here, if you're into DJ culture at all, this lineup is is the be all and end all. I got Jazzy Jeff, Jeez. who is my ultimate number one and has become a good friend of mine. I got DJ Scratch. Uh, EPMD's DJ Scratch. Oh, yes. sick. oh, sick. Yo, that, I'm a, I'm a big. When you talk about Goofy, yeah. I, yo, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, crazy. Uh, uh, Russell Peters, of course. I got Spin Bad, my partner in crime. Right. Scratch Bastard, who, in my opinion, is probably the greatest thing out of this country right now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. of course, Lindo P, who I started with, and on a technical level and all that, he's, you know, the hip hop reggae kid of, of all time. He's the greatest. Hands down. Um, skilled. Reggae DJ of all time. Hands speak down. Lindo P. Yes. Let's go back in history. I don't know if this is true, but way back in that time, Lindo was playing hip hop and you were playing the reggae. Is that true? Yes and no. We, we started out at Spectrum. That's where we first met. Yeah. Um, and he was actually just uh, verbally emceeing for a white guy named Steve playing reggae. I keep forgetting the name of their clean heart or whatever their sound yeah. was back then. Yeah. And then I was coming in playing hip hop. And then the more we got together, um, that's when, you know, the freaks of reality, the chill out, chill out. Oh, all, yeah. I, all those okay. guys were like, killing Spectrum them days. That, and then Lindo was performing. And you look, if you see pictures of him, you look like a little twig. look like a little pencil, <laughs> pencil with dreads. Or back then, he had the box cut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yes, yes. But, um, yeah, it, and so we've known each other forever. And, and I love Lindo to death. And, and we have a great relationship together. And, I mean, if you've ever seen Lindo when he just turns that switch and he turns into yeah. you know superman lindo it's, it's done it's something it's done. that it's you done. have to see so that night is the night of this it's called the night celebrating the dj because um it's just it's something it's a it's a lineup i wish i could just sit back and watch and i finally get to do that i so. can't wait to sit back and watch that man. now scratch crazy. you listed all of these djs right <laughs> are you gonna get me in trouble here yeah, or? you listed all these djs uh -oh. i think the people and the fans want to see starting from scratch play at least half an hour an hour I, for me it'd be the night but me personally <laughs> as a fan of you and a sense of you've taught me myself i can sit on radio and we've been together through thick and thin and we've been through whole so many things and you you know show me so many things but even at that your friends family are you going to touch your turntables for the night yeah, and, or one of those if, nights. if I do, it's gonna be that Saturday night because I need to do that just on a. Uh, I mean, I've got to play with all these guys over the years, but oh, yeah. to have everybody on one stage, that's my night. Like that's where I'm gonna nerd out, and I'm sure I'll jump on with Spin Band, and we'll do our little four turntable thing, and jump yeah. on with all these guys. <laughs> and I, I just think it, it's. I don't know. I, I'm so happy that I'm just. I'm happy first of all that everybody agreed to do it. Mm -hmm. Because um, it's really hard to get everybody together. We all know that, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm I'm super happy that I get to you know express this and share this with everybody. And I can't stress enough that I don't want it to just be about me. I mean, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it said someone had to do it. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And and what an occasion to do it. I mean, to be tw 
to be 25 years and still manage to be relevant in the, in this it's nasty big. storm that we call the music business is very hard to do. Yes, so, yes, yes. Um, I've been I, I hate the word lucky and fortunate, but I you know I've been whatever word you want to say it to just be able to to maintain a straight stream and just keep kind of pushing through all the other DJs that come around and some rise, some fall, mm -hmm. and I've just kind of always just drove the car kind of straight. You know, I never mm -hmm. tried to be that dude or never wanted to fail. So I just always, and I've always managed to find pockets, like, you know, touring with Russell, touring with George Lopez, touring with, you know, Keisha Shante and, and the Jelly Stones and all these other people. And, just, and um, I was finding even, cool stuff to do. Even hearing a story about one time you were playing in a club uh, down at uh, Richmond Street there, and, and Usher was in there, and he had a VIP booth. Mm, right. And left his VIP booth and came up to you and asked you, what are you doing next month? And you're like, yeah, what? that was actually, that was actually uh, at a wedding with like 50 people. Wow. on King Street and he was just there and then he stayed the whole night and he was dancing and then I turned around at the end of the night and I had to turn around and I had to look down because he was like, <laughs> so I turned around and he was just standing beside me and he just smiled and he's like so what are you doing next month and I was like I don't know you tell me and he's like okay I'm going to get back to you in a couple of days I'm going to take you on tour with me and I was like okay cool and, uh, let's do it and then the next thing I'm on tour and that I mean I always give him credit because he pushed me to my ultimate limits. Like, he turned me into a different person. Same. So, um, I thank him for that always. And uh, I wish he could be here, but, you know. Yeah. 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 So, so that. <laughs> <laughs> What's next for starting from scratch? I Where never have an answer for that. I'll be honest with you. I don't. Um, I've been asked that for 25 years, and I yeah. never know. I, I don't do. like to plan. I'm not a good planner, mm -hmm. which is amazing that I've survived this long. <laughs> But um, I just, you know what, to be honest, I mean, it sounds cliche or whatever. I just plug away. I just play my music. And who knows where to take it? Because, I mean, that's that's the beauty of music. Yeah. I mean, it goes in waves right now. I'm not a fan of the way club music is right now. Music. So I create my own lane. Mm -hmm. I do my own parties. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know yes. what I mean? Yes. Um, just mm -hmm. like the same way we started Redemption, Amnesia, right. Sweet Tears. Those are all outlets. Yes. And I think Toronto is really the only place where you can do that. And I, that's why I'll, I'll never leave. I think mean, people have been asking me for years, are you going to leave? Are you going to go live here? And yeah. I could have went to New York ages ago and, yes. and been that guy right. on the hot That's night right. set, but it didn't interest me because I, then I'm just that guy in their market. Mm -hmm. I want to be my guy in my market. That's a it. market I, I really feel that I was a huge part in creating. Yes. And it's still, you know, unfortunately, us older guys don't have the grasp on, on this club scene as we used to. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what we do have a grasp on it is people's trust. Like, I think the new generation doesn't really have people's trust. The new generation follows trends. Yes. Okay. Right? Our generation follows trust. They trust us. They know that when they come to see us, they know what they're going to get. Yeah, yeah, you right. go to any club on King Street, they'll be rammed, and you probably at the end of the night, you go, who is playing? They'll be like, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I had my bottle. I had my shisha. I had my bottle. Had, that was it. I heard a night of Drake and Future, and I, that was good, and I'm happy. But back then, it was like if we weren't on certain bills, nobody was coming. That's right. You know what I mean? Right. So it, it's both good and bad. But I think the reason we can't stay relevant now is because of when we started and because we were the ones that built the foundation. We built everything that is happening now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and it's it's a little saddening to watch it kind of slip away from our fingers. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's still comforting to me to know that I can still do any type of party I want to and still get, you know, easily a three, four hundred, five hundred people yeah. and just play by my that, that all these parties I've been doing lately I just play by myself yeah. five six hours straight mm -hmm. and I get to play what I want yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. because there's crowds for everything yes. and yes. DJs like yes. DJs from everywhere always complain oh I can't go anywhere you know I can't do I can't we can't do this in New York or we can't do this in Chicago we can't do this in and the truth be told they probably can't mm -hmm. because Toronto has this built we're known as that like if you come here and you're and you know you can only play one dimensional you're only gonna last so long you're going to burn out quickly. You're going to burn out very quickly mm -hmm. because there's 50,000 guys doing exactly what you do. Same thing. And anybody yes. can play, really, in my opinion, anybody can play the new music right now. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the technical aspect of the DJ has totally diminished. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of guys are just wasting their time counting checks and wasting their time just playing this music. And, you know, unfortunately for us, there's still guys like, the, um, like the Red Bull movement and all that is still pushing right. the real technical aspect of the DJ and, yeah. and lets people know that you know there's real DJs that still exist and mm -hmm. you know we always sound like we're the angry guys like oh you guys play on this and you guys play on that and, yes. you know you, you, don't know, you don't know what we went through and all that but the fact is we are the angry guys <laughs> <laughs> it, it be, yeah. it, truth be told I think any DJ you talk to that started out in the 90s or, or has been doing it for any 
substantial amount of time, we should be angry. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's yeah. people getting paid, you know, fifty thousand dollars to do dick all. You Nothing. know what I mean? And, yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and then there's and not to say you know they're not bringing anything to their table. They are, but that's that's not our table. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we'll always have our table. It's just always going to be a smaller yeah. table. Just like being a niche artist or or anything like that. You know what I mean? It's just you have to find your audience and and you have to be comfortable staying in that lane and i i'm i'm comfortable i'm happy now i'm not looking to be you know festival man i'm not looking to ha put my jesus pose on and put my hands up <laughs> as easy as that is to do it's yeah. never been my thing i'm not interested in that um even when i make music and produce music is this yeah, it's awesome not thing. music that you're really going to hear i do a lot of music with your cousin with yes. tyrone yeah. who i love to death who taught yeah. me a ton you know what I mean? that, working that, tracks with him for years that was a question i was going to ask you as well are you going to get up because the producing thing was was big for you yeah, so are you gonna stay with that? I love it, but I do like house music. I do like, I just, I, I'm, I'm not doing it for any purpose other than just for me to get that out of my system, really and truly. Yes, yes, yes. Speaking about angry, me and Press are always labeled as angry guys in clubs. Like you are, <laughs> you are. Yo, there's, there's, there's a couple of times we show up. Presto, like, presto more. Yeah, presto more. like so, some of these up and coming guys, they don't even own a Serato, they just show up. Or, yeah, it's depressing. We're, we're like, in a real depressing spot. What, what are you doing? What are you, where's your headphones? Like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Actually, that's funny you said that. Because the no headphone thing is one of my biggest peeves. Because you know what it is? Uh, like, I don't care. If you're, if you're, we had the same thing when CDs first came out. Right. Because we were all on vinyl. Right. Yeah. CDs came out, and then we had that issue of, okay, well, what do we do now? I, I never gravitated towards it, and then I, people were, like, oh, crapping on the CDs, like, oh, guys who play CDs aren't DJs, and I was like, that's not true. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's still some technical aspect to it. You can't get away with the freedom, and, and there was no sync buttons and all that stuff. Back Thank then. you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But now it's like, now it's like, you can't, I get, understand you can't fight technology. You have to embrace it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just the people getting away with murder the no headphones thing drives me nuts because it's the disrespect to the culture yes. And that's always been my biggest thing like with celebrity DJs and all that I understand it I don't like it because yeah. I find that they're disrespecting culture and I'm very passionate about the culture I take it per it's my life. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. been my life mm -hmm. forever mm -hmm. You know what I mean since I'm 17 years old. It's been my life. That's I live and breathe music mm -hmm. You know what I mean since I'm out of high school. This is all I do 24 hours a day you know what I mean? So I take it very, very personally when, you know, um, people do interviews and, and, and DBZD and DJs with these other guys and they call themselves button pushers and they call themselves this. Yeah. But they're billed as DJs and they're taking food and money out of guys that have put their heart and soul into this stuff and take yeah. it seriously. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're not going to take it seriously, then that's you're disrespecting our craft and our culture. And then that's where we take it personally. It's like, I'm not going to go do, I'm not going to go release a single me singing because I can't sing. <laughs> But Shit. I could go in the studio and make myself sound like Wicked. R. Kelly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, why am I going to do that? Because that's a disrespect to R. Kelly. That's Trust. a disrespect to everybody that's on that Thursday show. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yes. why do that? Because yes. I respect what they do. But I find people that do that disrespect us obviously have no respect for the art of the DJ. They just want the money and the girls and and, and that's Ray, it. Ray, 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 right? That's it. Yeah, so yeah, when yeah. you do that, mm -hmm. that's where I kind of cut the line and I'm, I'm like, I'm good. Start from scratch in studio, vibe over breakfast, team explosion. How's yeah. that for a morning show? Yo, <laughs> telling you, man, don't go anywhere. We're going to talk a little bit more with Start from Scratch, but in the meantime, we're going to get into some music. Yeah,